Welcome, my friends, to Shaking the Salt with Dr. Peppers. At the end of the message, stay tuned if you want to contact me for any reason, including prayers. Thank you. And I'm Dr. Peppers, Shaking the Salt. Here we go. All of us have times in our lives when we get down and discouraged. It could be a deep depression even when you face the death of a loved one or you've been through some kind of a critical physical or financial or some other trouble. But I know one thing for sure. When you have friends and family who have the gift of encouragement, they're always the ones you need to go to. Don't isolate. Don't hang out feeling sorry for yourself. Poor little me. I'm going to go eat some worms. Nobody loves me. Everybody hates me. The one thing that I have found is that God will always send somebody to encourage when I need him, and I always want to be there when someone needs encouragement. Sometimes I feel guilty because I have so many friends and family and even Facebook friends and those that are distant friends from other states and countries. I just would love to stay in contact with everybody, but I just can't. You know the feeling when you feel overwhelmed and you wish you could just sit down and talk to someone that used to be a real good close friend that you would hang out with and have long chats with, either in person or by phone, and suddenly you just think, I don't seem to have time anymore. What I can't let myself do and what you should not do at times like this is when you're feeling overwhelmed and when you feel like you should be able to help someone more, you can only do what you can do. Just remember that. And it's hard to prioritize when you have such good close friends who have been friends for so long. How do you spend more time with one than with another? Well, one thing I know is that when I start to get down and out, I sometimes come down on myself, which makes it even worse. Like, you aren't much of a friend. If you were a friend, you would either sit down, write them a note, pick up the phone, call them, go visit them, and my husband will say, stop, don't look at it like that. Look at it like, what can I do to encourage them? And then I find something smaller that won't take as much time, maybe a message, maybe a post on Facebook or private message them or send them a little note. This past week, we have just had the most wonderful banquet for an educational board that I'm on called E3 to educate, equip, and empower, including the student, the community, and the family. And when you have somebody that comes along that is so good at going in the classroom, like our trainers, our young trainers that the kids can relate to more, you know, I used to be a young teacher and I could really relate to my students. But as I got older, it seemed like I was more of a mom figure and then more of a grandmother figure. And I guess now I'm old enough to be their great, great grandparents. (laughs) But I do know that God will place you where you can be used to help others. In Philippians 4, 8, it says, brothers and sisters, one thing, fix your thoughts on what is true, what is honorable, what is right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think on these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. And I was just sitting and thinking about the people that had come to my event the other night where I was the MC, and I had some that were from my heart sisters, some from on the radio where I speak, some that were neighborhood friends, and I cherish those that were able to make it. I know all of you couldn't, and I know sometimes I can't, (laughs) but I do know that I have friends that are willing to stand behind me, pray for me love on me, hug on me, pick me up when I'm down, and I want to do the same for them. I have one friend that is such a caregiver right now for an elderly man that she's about ready to throw in the towel because she's wearing herself out physically. I have another friend that's going through a sickness with her daughter, 
and we have to just pray for her because you know how the mamas are when it's not even their daughter, but somebody else's that they're also praying for. And her name is Donna. And I'm just going to mention her because she has such a lovely, wonderful Christian family. And she has three daughters, one son, and they all love the Lord and they serve and do things for him. If you're going through a hard time right now, if you just feel like everybody is against you, you don't have anybody to uplift you or support or encourage you, or maybe you just don't feel like being with people, you just want to be alone, you're not alone, and there are people who can lift you up, pray for you. You don't have to sit down and talk to people. You don't have to even be able to give them hours of your time. But what does help is to know that you're on prayer lists. It helps to know that somebody is in your corner. It helps to know that you're not alone in this world in feeling grief or loneliness or facing situations of crises like many people are these days, death of a loved one. So I encourage you to ask somebody to pray for you. Leave me a message and ask me to pray for you. We have a prayer list that's about a mile long, and Bud and I go over our own prayer list every morning. We'll put you on prayer lists of the church and the friends and the heart sisters and people that we're with today. If you need prayer, if you need uplifting, whatever it is, there's one who will stick with you that will never forsake you. And you don't even have to worry about him ever not having time. When you go to God in prayer and ask him to change your thoughts about being, dwelling on loneliness or hard circumstances or lack of friends, whatever you keep playing over and over and over in your mind, we know that we can change our mind. The weapons that the Lord has given us are not human, carnal, but they are not of this world, but they are mighty for pulling down strongholds. What does all of that mean? It means that you can change your mind. You can think on things that are pure and lovely. You can pray and ask God to change your thoughts, to literally change your mind. And when you pray that, and you know that the Word of God is what you've been given to learn the truth about God, even about your circumstances and about yourself, it helps us to just see who He says we are so that we can take those negative thoughts, those lies that the enemy would love for us to believe and think about, and take them captive and compare them to what the Word of God says. The Bible says that every part of God's armor is important, and we cannot fight the lies or the tactics of Satan himself, let alone without protection of the Lord, and the truth that we find in God's Word. So the weapons he gives us are mighty. The Bible itself is a double-edged sword. The Word is powerful, and when you speak God's Word, think His Word, pray His Word— arm yourself with the truth that's found in the Word of God, you find that you no longer are having those horrible thoughts, or that when one comes back, just throw it away right away. When you start to think, but I don't, stop it, stop it. Be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power, and put on all of God's armor found in Ephesians 6, and you can stand against the lies of the enemy. He'd love to bring you down. He would love to see you defeated and discouraged. But you don't have to stay that way. Even in the midst of a trial, a tragedy, just stop and say, God, I don't know the reason for this. I don't understand this. But I am thanking you for giving me the strength to make it through this, to see what I should do through this, and how I can help others. And when you pray that, my friend, you are no longer at the mercy of the enemy, or even at the mercy of our worst enemy, which sometimes is ourself.
God, I pray for the ones listening right now that need strength and encouragement. I pray, God, that you would just wrap your arms around them. Let them know how much you love them. Let them get into the word and find out what you say about the truth that we know that we can know the truth, and it will indeed set us free, make us free from all of those thoughts and the lies of Satan himself. I pray that that one today would just stop and pray privately after we finish here, that they might get to know you better and learn what your purpose is for using even these events in their life that can glorify you and bring peace to them. And I pray that in Jesus' name. I'm Dr. Pepper shaking the salt. Thank you, my friends, and God bless you this day and every day. Thanks for staying on, my friend. If you would like to contact me, visit saltandlightministry.com. If you want to share your story with me, ask a question, have me come speak to your group, or maybe just request prayer. Once again, saltandlightministry.com. Thanks and God bless.